you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy Let's do that one more time, please. Thank you. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. I was standing back there and was just thinking about all sorts of things, really. I'm sure I'm not alone, but there have been things in my life that have turned. Um, but if you know, and if you've been in that place too, you don't know when you're in it that it will turn. Like you look back and you'd be like, man, I'm glad he turned that. But when you were in it, you didn't know that it was about to turn. And I was just telling Neil, but it reminded me of this thing we used to sing. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. And it's going to work in your faith. Now, and, I, and I, before y'all get too excited, look, I'm not trying to do a thing, but she, she turned already. But listen. <laughs> But I was thinking about that because that's how it feels, right? It, like, sometimes I'll be like, God, can we turn it at like 2.59 p.m.? Like, can we turn it, can we turn it at 3 o'clock? But oftentimes, uh, it's, it's attached to our faith, right? There's, there's a thing he's using it to work out. And it often requires us getting to the end of ourselves. And so, I had some questions that really I want to kind of lead with. We'll, we'll do this. And then we'll, I'll share a couple things with you. I'm going to ask the praise team to stay here just for a few minutes. Um, but the, first, the questions I want to give you, you don't have to write this down, but I just want you to be thinking. Okay, first question is, what have you been thinking about lately? What are you most sensitive about right now? What's causing stress and worry and anxiety? right now. Now this last question is really you and I talking here, but did you know that that thing belongs to Jesus? Like as much as it feels like it's your responsibility to fix, did you know he's interested in being a part of the solution? As much as you feel like if you don't do it and hold it, it won't change, did you know that our God really would love to be tapped in and take care of it on your behalf? And in the book of John chapter 10, verse 10, which is kind of going to be the blanket scripture here for our time, it says in a New Living Translation, this is Jesus talking, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. And then Jesus comes around and he says, but my purpose is to give a rich and satisfying life. Simply put, the enemy takes while Jesus gives. The enemy takes while Jesus gives. That's the foundation of our belief. And we see an example of this. When a father was looking for a solution for his son, and Jesus had to step in. Let's turn to Mark chapter 9 really quickly. And I want to read this account just to give you an example of that. Mark 9, 14 says, When they returned to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd surrounding them. And some teachers of religious law were arguing with them. Verse 15, when the crowd saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with awe and they ran to greet him. Jesus is like, what is all this arguing about? 
And one of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son so you could heal him. You see right here, y'all, he was thinking about his son. He says, he is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. The father is stressed about his child. And whenever the spirit seizes him, it throws him to the ground and he foams at the mouth and he grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. You can see in these words that this father had anxiety about what his son was going through. And so the father says, so I asked, I asked your disciples to cast out the spirit, but they couldn't do it. And verse 19, Jesus said to them, you faithless people, how long must I be with you? They're like, whoa, Jesus, that was intense. How long must I put up with you? This next sentence is it, y'all. Jesus says, bring the boy to me. Let that sit. So the father is having anxiety and stress and worry about a thing. And, and the middle of what he's having stress about, the enemy's hands is all over it. Taking his son's ability to speak. Taking his son's ability to walk. Taking his son's ability to live. And Jesus doesn't push this man away. No, he ends this text with saying, bring the boy to me. And there are things in our life that we have been wrestling with, struggling with, having issues with, things that's keeping us up at night, things that's making us get a second and third job, things that's making us work harder than we want to, things that's keeping us from our children, things that's keeping us from our spouse, things that's keeping our mind unhealthy, things that's keeping our heart toxic, things that's keeping us in toxic relationships. There are things that we have been doing, y'all, over and over and over and over again, but the word of the Lord today is so simple bring it to Jesus. I ain't got nothing else for you. <laughs> Say, give it to Jesus. Giving it to Jesus is not just a good idea. You see, we are blessed and have grace because we are in Jesus. We need a bottom said this years ago. We don't just wait on God. We wait in God. You see, in him we receive patience to deal with people. We receive strength to not respond to negativity. That's what some of y'all need right now. Hallelujah. We receive the ability to stay motivated. For some of us, it's not even that we're dealing with issues, but we're struggling with getting motivation to live. But in God, you get motivation to live the life he's called you to live. You get tenacity to go after what is yours. You get love to cover your mistakes and forgiveness to move on from them. And you get the belief to speak to every mountain, valley, river, ocean, opportunity, issue, blessing, burden. I don't care what it is in God. You get what you need to speak to it. And his word simply says, as the power of life and death, is in our tongue. And so, while the enemy may try to take, my God gives. And I believe it. You see, because we can read it, but do we believe it? That he gives gives. He gives grace. He gives second chances. He gives support. He gives relationships. He gives a covering. He gives a hedge. He gives protection. He gives life. He gives. 
And in life, we come against a lot of things that challenges our belief that God gives. Because why am I struggling if he gives? Why am I walking through this if he gives? Why am I battling this if he gives? Well, we find that answer in John 10.10. Because while God is giving, the enemy is seeking to take. Okay, we're on the same page? And so today is Communion Sunday. And it is a reminder that we believe in God. And that we don't just believe, like we don't just believe it in our thoughts, but we believe it in our actions. We live as if everything we just read is true. And so at this time, I want to read a quick point that I have. And while I'm doing that, I want to ask if the porters can prepare for communion at this time. Paul goes deeper into this concept of God giving and believing it. And he breaks it down to the church of Ephesus in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. And you could turn there if you'd like, or you can follow along on the screen. But Paul says it like this. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. So right there we see that we are blessed because we are united with Christ. Verse 4, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ. Pause. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ. So it's not only that we are united with Christ, we have always been chosen by God. Always. Chosen Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Verse 5, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus this is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. Verse 6, so we praise God for the grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood. Say with the blood. Say with the blood of his son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son. Verse 8, he has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ. Okay, which is to fulfill his own good plan. Verse 10 says, and this is the plan. Tell your neighbor, this is the Chico. That at the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united, because we receive an inheritance from God, because he chose us in advance, he makes everything work out according to his plan. This verse here, this 11, it ends with saying he makes everything work out. The opportunity you've prayed for but have been insecure about, he will work it out. The struggle you may face with your thought life or your mental health, he will work it out. The weakness you've experienced in your body, he will work it out. The lack that seems to return in your life every year, he will work it out. You see, because according to his plan, as long as you bring it to Jesus, he takes it and turns it. In layman's terms, he makes everything work out. Alex, why are you spending so much time on this? 
Because the truth of the matter is, John 10.10 10 talked about how the enemy takes and God gives. And many of us are in the middle of that reality. We have made very bad decisions that gave the enemy access into our life. And we're human. We're not perfect. It will happen. <laughs> but we serve a God that has a plan, say, of redemption. He can redeem it. Through his blood, the bad decision we made, when we give it to him, he redeems it. And then he makes everything work out. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it. You. And so when we sing that, I, my goal, my assignment this morning is for you now to believe it. I want you to believe it. That's what I want you to do this morning. I want you to believe that he makes everything work out according to his plan. Because if we can get that belief up, then the enemy can stop tempting you to make decisions that are not for your good. The only time and the only reason why you're going to try to take matters into your own hand is when you don't believe God's plan. But if you can believe he works it out, then you're not going to be tempted by some quick fix. You're not going to be tempted by that short-term situation. You're not going to be tempted by that short-term increase because you're committed to the plan of God. Communion is an opportunity we have as believers to remember what Christ did for us on the cross. It is important that we continue to remember Jesus as it is important for our faith and commitment to God. At this time, I want to ask that you search your heart for any unforgiveness. Search your heart for offense. I want you to search your heart for judgment. I want you to search your heart for sin. And in this moment, I want you to repent. Repent from that. And release that person. Paul tells us that if we do not do this, we can bring judgment upon ourselves from God for not forgiving others as he forgave us. Mm. You take what the enemy meant for you and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Release it. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Repent from any unforgiveness, offense. Repent from any judgment. Repent from any sin. Give all that over to God in this season now. It's not worth it to hold on to it. They can't fix it even if they tried. Matter of fact, the unforgiveness is taking up more space in your mind than theirs. So just release them. Release them. Scripture says, for I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. That on the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. 
And then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. And in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in re remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us drink together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to elevate our expectancy of your return. Jesus, you are our priority. You come first in our life. Everything we have need of is found in you. And we are not interested in living without you being a part of it. And so receive the spiritual discipline of communion of the Lord's Supper on this morning as a sign of our dedication to you and our belief that you live and shall return to come and get us. We ask these things by faith. According to his grace, let it be so. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you have trust in God? Do you have faith in God? Do you believe God? I want you to repeat these things, three things after me. I believe God with my mind. I believe God with my mouth. I believe God with my might. My mind, my mouth, my might. Your belief today, these last eight minutes that I have with you, I want it to be unleashed through your thought life. I want it to explode in your conversation. And I want it to take over how you make decisions and use your resources. Because what is our belief if it stays locked away? When will you let your mind know that you believe in God? Oh, you ain't ready. Okay. When will you let your thoughts know that you believe God? That as much as these thoughts come in that are not for my good and that probably will never happen, <laughs> that my God is stronger. There's a scripture about our mind that Paul gives us in Philippians 4, 8. It simply says, now dear brothers, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true. Say true. What is honorable, say honorable. What is right, say right. Say pure, lovely, admirable. That is what it looks like to believe God with your mind. That whenever you have this train going of why it won't work out, how it's not going to work out, how it won't manifest, how it's not going to end well, that you arrest your thoughts and say, I declare in the name of Jesus that thoughts of a good report shall come into my mind now. I declare I will meditate on what is true now. I declare I'm going to meditate on what's honorable now. It is up to us to arrest our thought life. Say, what I'm going to do this week? I'm going to arrest my thought life. I'm not going to let conversations, oh, that's hot. I'm not going to let conversations get me off path. And speaking of our mouth, Psalms 19, 14, David says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer. What you say matters. How you talk matters. How you correct somebody else matters how you react with your tone matters Amen. 
K. And because we live in the 21st century in 2024, I also have to tell you that how you tweet matters. What happens in those DMs matters. The text messages count as your language. Did you know that? Be like, I didn't say it. I typed it. <laughs> it matters. And what did David said he wanted those things to do? That, that they be acceptable in thy sight. Our prayer is, Lord, let my conversation this week be acceptable in your sight. Convict me, God, when I'm talking and saying things I shouldn't be saying. Matter of fact, help me and my friends, because sometimes it be the friend group, you see. It don't even be me. It be them. And we in a group text together, and they start saying stuff. But I don't stop them. Oh, okay. Like... You see, sometimes it's not even always just you. It's what you've been surrounding yourself around. And your belief in God should be reflected in your conversation, in your relationships. Who knows? Maybe the Lord wants to use one of you this week to encourage a close friend. And they're going to need you to say what the Lord's will for their situation is. They don't want you to sound like the latest TikTok trend. They don't want you to quote the latest lyric. They want you to speak what came out of your prayer life. And so it's up to us, those who are filled with the Spirit, to know that we are used by God to elevate love and joy and peace in this earth. And so I'm going to be ready to let my conversation be used by God and to be acceptable in thy sight. When it comes to our might, Philippians 4.13, this is my life verse, y'all. This is my favorite verse. I was taught this verse when I was in third grade living in Tulsa, Oklahoma at Anderson Elementary. Every Wednesday morning, we had Christian club. They would give us free donuts, and they would make us do a scripture challenge. All y'all educators, I'm telling y'all, if y'all want y'all kids to do Christian club, just bring donuts. That's it. Just bring the donuts, and they come. And I guarantee you, I was there every single week for my donut. Philippians 4.13, I can do, ooh, okay, yeah, there we go. I can do, I can do through Christ who strengthens me. <sighs> Have you ever applied for something, got it, and then in it, and you was like, uh-oh, what did I do? I want to open this up because when we see this scripture, sometimes it can look like it's about um, <clears throat> breaking out of issues. But, you know, I have needed this scripture, to be very frank with you. I've needed it more to stay in opportunities. There are, as God expands and grows and stretches your tent pegs, let me tell you all something. Being responsible for more. Being responsible for people, having a family, stewarding resources, you, are, you, you can become so nervous about making the wrong decision that you get something we call in the industry, we call it analysis paralysis. It's when you get stuck because you don't know which way to go. You've analyzed every outcome. And now you know so much about what can go wrong, you do nothing. I have needed this scripture more to not be frozen as God grew my family. And I want to focus everyone in this room on the fact that your days will not always be about struggling with your weaknesses. A day is coming where it's going to be about maintaining the growth God gives you. And if you are not prepared to know how to steward the addition that God gives you, you will lose it or you will be frozen and the enemy will take it. So I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. As he grows me, as he establishes me, as he heals me, because that leg not going to hurt forever. That leg is going to be healed. As he heals me, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
as he brings my marriage closer and to the next level because you're not going to be arguing with your spouse forever. Y'all getting to the other side. Oh, they didn't know, Neil. They thought they was going to be upset at each other for a long time. The Lord is about to heal that marriage. And when you get on the other side of that issue, I guarantee you, you're going to need His wisdom on how to govern the next house. How do we build the next thing? How do we speak into our children? How do we use our marriage to expand His kingdom? Oh, you will get to the other side of that issue. I'm telling you now. If you believe it. The enemy takes, but God gives, and He makes everything work out for what? Your good. What we believe must inform how we live, love, and move in the earth. We are the representation of the kingdom in our community, at our workplace, and in our families. Do not discount the power of God. When unleashed through you, lives are saved, joy is expanded, and the enemy is defeated. Hallelujah. There are people hurting, broken, and confused, not sure of how to change their life. And at times, I want to prepare you, your confidence, your belief may challenge the enemy and someone else. Okay? You may make some negative motivations agitated just by your presence. Because not everybody, not everybody around you, unfortunately, is for you. That's just where we live, baby. I was telling my wife the other day, I was picking up something. I don't want to say what I was picking up because it's going to reveal where I was. It was all holy. I just don't want to put this person's business out there like that. But anyway, I was picking up something, and I'm walking out, and they had this person pulled up on the street. And they had the window rolled down. And so I'm seeing a person pull up on the street. I'm like, you good? Because I just want to make sure they're good. She look at me. What you mean, am I good? Whoa. I was just asking. I said, I was just, I said, you're, you're looking at me, and I'm asking if you're good. And she's like, I'm good. Oh, I'm good. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave now. And so my wife was trying to help me. She was like, well, baby, maybe you came off aggressive. Maybe, maybe you were giving aggression. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I just said you good. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't say you good, but I live on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. I don't know how, what else to say. You know, we go check the mailbox. You good? Like, but what really it is is that there's, there's going to be some times where you agitate other people. And it's not, and it shouldn't make you change who you are. Okay? Now, if you trifling, change. Okay? Because, <laughs> daddy, they're going to take that and say, I ain't got to change. Like, if you trifling, change, please. Okay. But my point is that. I don't want you to change your belief and your confidence in God because it makes other people uncomfortable. That is their problem. They got to take that up with their God, and they got to figure that out, and they got to get their confidence up. But as for you, as for me and my house, we going to serve who? The Lord, okay? So do not back down. Do not rethink your strategy. Do not change who God has called you to be no matter what you face. Continue to give everything to Jesus. Seek to reconcile when you can. Seek to promote the principles of Christ. Be an example. Believe in God. Amen? Please stand. Please stand. Please stand. Please stand. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to kind of flip it for a quick second. And I will not be silent, I will always worship you. It's, we're ending with a declaration, real quick here. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you one more time one more time i would not be silent and i will not be silent that's it i will always 
work. That's it. As long as I am breathing, as long as I am breathing, that's it. I will always worship. Here's my worship. Here's my worship. Here's my worship. That's it. That's it. That's it. Receive. That's it. Thank you, Lord God. God, we love you. We praise your name. You are holy, holy, holy. There is none like you, and we lift you high. Receive our worship. Receive our worship. Receive our worship. Thank you, Father. So, Lord God, we thank you so much for everything you're doing in our life. We declare in the name of Jesus that you allow your angels to be unleashed in our families, unleashed in our neighborhoods, unleashed in our city, and unleashed in our country. God, we believe in you. We believe you with our mind, we believe you with our mouth, and we believe you with our might. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Yea, though we walk through the valley of a shadow of death, we will fear no evil. We will fear no evil. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so I will not be. I vow, Lord. This is our vow, God. We go always worship you. We commit to you, Father. We recommit that as long as we're breathing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, you are good, God. You are good, God. And so we ask these things by faith according to your grace let it be so in jesus name amen amen thank you all you have a blessed week and we'll see you next sunday